Our next speaker from the US, Jane Winchell, is the Sarah Fraser Robbins Director of the Dottie Brown Art and Nature Center at Peabody Essex Museum in Massachusetts. Jane has been curating ecology for about 30 years. And the title of her discussion is Inspiring Action, Art, Nature and Climate Change. So Jane. Thank you so much, Sophia. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you. And I'm gonna be giving you a brief overview of what we've done here at the Peabody Essex Museum, which dates back to 1799 out of uh, Salem, Massachusetts, the oldest continuously operating museum in the United States, which doesn't mean a whole lot in Europe since I know uh, your institutions often date back longer than that. But we um, have had natural history collections in the museum since its founding, but we uh, have not been a science-based institution for over a century. And so the question became, how do we make these natural history collections relevant? And what is the role of natural sciences within an institution that's focusing on art and culture? So it's a wonderful, um, take off from this last conversation in terms of active learning, the role of art, thinking about um, the what we do and how we engage with visitors has been very much part of our focus within this new space that we call the Art and Nature Center, which dates back to 2003, but has continued to evolve over the last nearly 20 years in terms of our focus and our intentions. Um, but fundamentally, what we're really looking at is how do we engage families and younger visitors in thinking about and participating in nature in experiential ways um, that not only engage the, the youth, but also their parents. And so that it be in um, a, an experience that engages everyone who comes regardless of their prior knowledge. Um, and so this is, has become a really important zone within the museum to be um, engaging a broad range of visitors. The, the pod is our ongoing display space where we are really looking at um, how we tie in all these museum collections through the lens of our relationship with our living environment. Uh, with a lot of hands-on elements, you'll see here, this is a place where we're, we're really hoping that uh, our visitors, especially our youngest visitors, will start to explore their, their connection with nature, being part of nature, and, and using things like empathy as a way to increase engagement and understanding of the environment that is not focused so much on um, facts and figures as it is on feeling part of the whole. So that is very much our intention here, working with creativity and imagination as fundamental tools for that. And then whenever we're incorporating digital elements that that's really building on the experience of the real um, elements that are part of the exhibits. We work a lot with museum objects and then extending those connections online. One way that we've really worked on bringing the outside in because we can't really have living elements within this space because of the nature of the collections is with artists such as this site specific movement artist, um, Laura Catherine. And she went out and recorded herself being part of the environment. And then those are projected on the wall and people can pick different places they want to visit with that in mind with and see her embodying place. Then we have a separate section within the Art Nature Center where we have changing exhibitions. And these have evolved over time as well, but they are theme based. We've done about 14 of them to date. And again, these are family focused. They're meant to be as multi-sensory as possible, incorporating um, interactives and that we experiment with approaches and ideas. One of the, um, I'm gonna show you just a few of these quickly, the Beyond Human Artist-Animal Collaborations 
really look to put people in relationship with animals as creators, artists who are working in that realm um, and, and exploring kind of the, the realm of what it means to create with another species. In the Branching Out um, Trees as Art exhibition, um, in addition to including works of art from a, a wide range of contemporary artists, we also incorporated a game where you, you played the tree of knowledge game um, and or knowledge of tree game, sorry. And then in the background here, you see this tree of ideas where we invited visitors um, to share uh, their thoughts of what might it be like to be a tree or if you could communicate with a tree, what would you want to say or ask? And we had an overwhelming response to those simple prompts. And wanting to bring people outside to experience trees in a different way, um, this artist was, was working with the bioelectrical um, signals of trees and converting that into a sound experience. So people were able to realize they're not just static elements in the environment, they are living beings and that they are generating electric, electrical uh, messaging as part of their uh, experience. In the wild designs, we are looking at bio-inspired design, biomimicry. Um, this pulls into this um, more recent realm that we've been focusing on of um, climate and environment as a focus. And then where the questions live, um, which is our current exhibition in the um, Art and Nature Center changing exhibition space right now, was an artist who spent a year exploring um, what it is to be human um, in nature and, uh, and then offered that to our public. And it was a really wonderful way for people to experience nature um, experientially and uh, very much offered, um, uh, we could really see people shifting um, in their connection with nature. This has led to our most recent initiative here at PAM, uh, the Climate and Environment Initiative, where we are, it's a multi-pronged approach to working with this idea of, of um, how we encourage reflection um, inspiring conservation and sparking action uh, among our visitors and um, through both exhibition and programming. So the exhibition opening uh, Climate Action Expiring Change in April is our foundational exhibition in this series and working with youth artists and with um, a range of contemporary artists focusing on artists in this in this area in particular, to explore ideas of climate action. Um, so uh, Jada here is a, a youth climate artist who won a, uh, was a winner of a, a recent competition that's an international competition. Being very much inspired by the youth climate movement and generating this installation and really wanting to focus on known solutions and the in, the imperative role of collective action in moving us forward, while keeping in mind this needs to be appealing to an intergenerational audience. So the types of works we picked, if they were going to be um, evocative, that, they, that there be a way that people be able to talk about them um, and that they not be uh, leaving people feeling in despair. Um, focusing on aspects like regenerative energy, re sorry, regenerative agriculture um, uh, through artworks that are, are representing that and then bringing in the significance of solar energy, um, uh, green energy in general, um, boosting energy uh, efficiency. And then the even things like the carbon footprint of food um, where, where that would be an experiential element that people would be able to pick up, not by the uh, the weight, the, the uh, gravitational weight of the food, but by its carbon weight. And this um, is really about empowering um, our visitors to become climate citizens. 
And so that felt like a way that we could do that was um, offering examples uh, such as the Youth Climate Leaders um, program in the Massachusetts Audubon Society. These are youth that are actively engaged. Um, presenting works by um, Native American artists as a way to bring also in the messaging of the importance of indigenous value systems to how we move forward. Reciprocity as a foundational, um, a means of relating uh, to all beings. And so this is fundamentally uh, a part of the exhibition as well. And working with um, comic artists uh, that transcend generations as ways of communicating messaging uh, efficiently and also in an accessible way. And uh, connecting people to a platform uh, uh, like the um, Count Us In aggregator that people can take a step and be seeing the, the um, importance of the collective power um, by people coming together. Other um, exhibitions that are part of this series include uh, one that we just opened a week ago with uh, Bernie Krauss, a soundscape ecologist, who is um, through his recordings demonstrating how um, remarkable natural soundscapes have been and the depth of the um, um, the acoustical arrangement and how diminished that is becoming through degraded environments um, and climate change uh, down to the bone, which is two different artists who, who are responding to the consequences of environmental degradation. And then the blue trees, which is an installation we're opening in April, uh, Condemopolis works with the public to apply a bright blue pigment to the trunk of trees as a way of highlighting the uh, concerns over deforestation and, and the connections of that to uh, climate change. And then just to wrap up here, we've been incorporating uh, programming that's tying together, for example, the, the COVID epidemic and pandemic and uh, how that relates to climate. Um, and then working with our local community to be uh, exploring different uh, aspects relating to mitigation and resiliency through uh, being a partner in the um, annual climate change conference. And then within the museum itself, um, I've been leading a group called the Climate and Environment Ideators, where a cross-departmental effort to um, tap into all these different individuals that are part of our museum who have, have interests and um, energy and motivation to work on uh, the climate issue within the museum. What are the things that we can be doing as an institution to become a, a more sustainable, a more climate friendly um, institution? And so both in terms of our properties, making those, looking for ways we can be more sustainable in our um, gardening practices, and, and also look doing an assessment. We've, we've just started this uh, part of the initiative. We're doing an assessment now of the museum's own um, standing in terms of where are the places that we can make the most difference within our institution, what has already been done to date, and how can we move forward? So that's an overview, a uh, very brief overview, I hope um, with enough content to be uh, valuable to, to all of you. Um, and uh, I'm happy to answer any questions as well, Sophia, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Jane. <laughs> so many things that you're doing, both with respect to awareness and to action, conscience, climate conscience. I will ask you a more personal question. I've read in one of your interviews that you're, it started as a sudden profound realization that I could no longer not do an exhibit on the climate crisis and more specifically on climate action and this action part. And I'm wondering, what, could you elaborate on the moment of this revelation in your mind, how, how connected it is with respect to today and the discussions on the climate and how it's become much more 
headlines, so to speak? Right. No, it's a great question because I've incorporated elements of, of bringing in climate throughout uh, the range of exhibitions leading up to this time. And my concern had been that if I do a whole exhibition, you know, how do we do that? That it not be depressing for people and, and that people, we need people to come into the exhibition. It's not enough to do the exhibit. Um, and, and then I realized I just have to get over that. I just have to um, trust that there was a way to go forward and that by making the step toward, okay, I'm committing to doing this, then um, I will figure out how. And, and that really has been the case that I, that I really did want to be focusing on the solution aspects. And that's where partnering with the Climate Museum here um, in the US and in New, York, in New York City was so vital because that had been their also kind of their grounding was, all right, when we're doing this, we want to be motivating people. We don't want to be um, pushing them further into a place of fear. And, and so I felt like that was really key for me if I'm um, working from a place that I'm focusing on that family audience and making this accessible. Um, so yeah, that, that was, it was just one of those moments where uh, I suddenly realized, oh, I just have to decide I'm doing this and then figure out how. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. One more question from my our audience, and please do write your names and affiliations. It's uh, Jane, you spoke about inspiring action as a goal of the project. Have you measured or how do you plan to measure the impact and whether the audience or participants have actually taken new action? Yes, I, th I think that that's a really important point and we won't really be able to measure it within the exhibition because we opted to work with an aggregator that's already established an international aggregator to generate something like that within the museum was going to be exceedingly expensive. So we don't have a way of measuring, but I, and I think it would be very difficult because so much of this is, even as you all were, were speaking to in this last session of like, we have to start from operating within, like there is so much change that needs to be happening within ourselves in terms of how we are relating to this issue, how we are relating to each other, both human beings and other beings. And so it seemed to me in a way that we need to be working this as a starting point. And then perhaps in another iteration, we will have a way of measuring. Um, but at this point, there wasn't really a way that we could figure easily of, of, a of a determining that. A similar question, a bit more specific by Yanis Mihailidis. He says, excellent presentation, Jane, thank you. Do you have any insights regarding the impact of both nature and local culture on creativity? Mm. <laughs> well, uh, to me, uh, nature is an endless source and inspiration for creativity. And, um, and that's one of the things that's been so exciting for me in the Art Nature Center is all the different contemporary artists uh, that are working with nature in the creative capacity and also working with, um, the, uh, we have artists who are native artists working locally who are participating specifically in this show. So the Wampanoag drum, the uh, Native American superheroes um, was inspired by this show and they are creating a whole series of these drums that they want to use programmatically as a way of inspiring people to be their own superheroes in this moment. Like we need everyone to be a superhero. So I loved that um, that was the impetus for that series was this exhibition that they are then going to carry forward. Thank you. And one question about the climate and environment ideators. Could you share more about this interdepartmental group? Does it work? What kind of new ideas and practices has it generated? Well, we've just started this in August. So it's a very recent um, project, but I had more people than I could really accommodate um, from the get-go. And 
people have been really engaged. And in fact, we're, we're going to create an intranet site where we can uh, mm. accumulate the different um, things like uh, funding options, uh, a, a listing of where across the museum, what are the things that have already been done? What are the things that we want to be tracking as, as options? Um, and so it's actually, I've been really pleased, even in the few months that we've been started, the ideas that people have been, have been feeding and the uh, letting people know there's this conference going on that relates things that myself as an individual couldn't possibly track. And, and we're actually having our executive director and our chief uh, operating officer are gonna speak to this group tomorrow to overview where the museum is at now and take questions from us um, about ideas we want to bring to the table. So we're off to a good start, I think. Excellent, very fresh news. Thank you very much. One question, a practical one by Rawad Mashoud. Uh, thank you, very interesting talk, Jay. How can we be in contact with you if somebody wants? To oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. So um, uh, my email is, very straightforward, um, Jane or Janie underscore Winchell, um, as it appears on the screen here, at PEM.org. So um, I'd be very happy to receive any inquiries. Obviously, um, this is an opportunity for us to be networking across the board. And, and I really enjoyed the, the, con the conversation prior to mine. Um, so I hope that, that we can be working together going forward. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, Jane. And we will put your email in the chat as well for everybody to see. Great. Accept. Terrific. Thank you, Jane. All right. Bye now. Bye.